Hi and welcome back to the channel. Today we're going to be taking a look at what it takes to get a Luban number 4 out of the box to working properly. So that will be sharpening, flattening the back if needs be and uh, dressing the back of the blade and stuff like that. Now in the interest of transparency I have already opened this just to check that everything was alright. However you can see hopefully that the plane has still got a layer of grease all over it and that I haven't done anything to it. So let's see just how quickly we can get this fully operational. So the first thing to do is to get rid of all the grease that's all over this and then we can check a few things to see if they're straight, level and flat and such. And this is going to be replacing my Axminster Rider number 4. The Rider number 4 is just nowhere near in the same league quality wise but it's still a reasonably good functional plane. So what I'm going to do with that is grind a 10 degree back bevel on the blade and uh, we can use it for trickier grain stuff. Now this is just Wilco's loosen up maintenance spray. I'm using it because I don't have any WD-40. It seems to work just as well at removing grease and stuff like that though. So. I think we'll be all right. You can see straight out of the box the machining on this is really nice. I mean, there are a few very light scratches in this. I don't know if, you, if the camera will pick them up, but they're not from the machining. They're just from where it's been knocked about in storage, probably. Lowest these go down to is 0 0.04 millimeters, which is seven or eight thousandths. It's still very thin. That's not getting in anywhere along the front. Yeah, I mean the blade is basically flat, which is nice, it's a good start. And likewise, cap iron's nice and flat as well. All right, and the next step is to actually hone the blade. So here I am using the Veritas Mark II honing guide, and I'm going to be honing at 35 degrees. I know a lot of people hone at 30, I prefer 35. And I'm using the cambered roller. Now to start with, I will only be doing pull strokes. Once I can feel that the paper underneath is perfectly flat, I can move on to pull and push. And on this first grit, I tend to go a little bit longer than the other grits because I actually want to get a polished edge. 
Right, and as you can see, hopefully, focus, focus, there is just the very slightest polished edge along there, which is what we're after. And I'm now going to start putting the camber on. Hopefully you can see that just on the corners here, it's starting to camber just ever so slightly. And I can also feel a little burr just on the back there, which is perfect. Right, so that's it for the scary sharp. What we're going to do now is move on to the stropping. Some people say don't strop, some people say do. There's a lot of arguments as to the benefits and negatives of it. I believe in stropping, I think it makes a difference. However, what I will say is that I always strop in the honing guide because if you don't strop in the honing guide, all you're going to do is bend that nicely sharpened edge over. Once that is done, I'm now going to take this out of the guide and strop the back. So that's sharp enough. Now that took what five minutes maybe. You can get away with um, a lot less than that. What time are we on there? So now with the blade back in, I've made sure that it's not protruding any. And stick this on here, take the feeler gauge, it's not getting under there, not under there. Not under there. So that 
at first glance appears to be nice and flat. Another thing we can do is we can just give it a few passes just over here. And there's no obvious high spots, which is great. So all I'm doing here is taking shaving from the middle and one from each side. So it's cutting a little bit heavy there. So I'll just move the lever over to that side a little bit. Not much. And that seems to be relatively even so just back it off a little bit Right, so here we go. I haven't waxed the bottom of this plane yet either. However, focus. So that is a very nice thin shaving. You can see it's entirely translucent if I put my fingers behind it. And let's see where we're at with that. So this is a full width shaving in beach as well, remember that. This is, can you see this? I don't know. That is on half out. Let's test it somewhere else. And there it's about three quarters of a thousandth. So it's a very, very even shaving along the full length of the board and across, it's the same across the width of the board as well. Right, so that's it sharpened, set up and tested. Now the next thing is, see the difference in weight. This is the rider plane. And that is 2,001 grams, so two kilos basically. And this is 2,291 grams, so 2.29 kilos. So there is a difference in weight and it is actually noticeable. I 
I don't know if you can see this or not, but if I get them set up there like that, and if I So both planes are aligned at the front and by the time you get to the back the Luban is maybe 10 mil longer which isn't a great deal but it is reasonably noticeable. So put that away. And just in terms of looks, side profile of the Luban I think looks a lot nicer. This has got a nice bronze cap, but it's not a proper lever cap like with the Luban, and I prefer the proper lever caps. Anyway, that's these two planes for you. Put these away. So that's the Quangsheng Luban number four smoothing plane straight out of the box. I spent there probably a total of 20 minutes checking that the back of the blade was flat, uh, sharpening and honing it, and checking that the sole of the plane was flat and then setting it up to take shavings and as you saw half a thousandth of an inch shaving straight basically straight out of the box with a horn so realistically out of the box you don't need to flatten the bed of the plane at all just check it and if it's flat it's flat that's fine um, so normally when I get them I open the box I check the sole of the plane is flat with the blade in the plane and I take the plane blade out and I check that for flatness and what I will normally do is I won't touch the back of it until I've honed. Once I've honed the cutting edge, I'll then just go onto the back, get rid of the burr, and just polish that very tiny little bit on the edge of the plane blade. But yeah, as I said, nice and quick and easy. There's not next to nothing to do with these planes. And once they're honed, they take a beautiful thin, even shaving. They're heavier than the uh, competing rider planes. They're better made than the rider planes and they perform better than them. So don't be put off with the fact that they're made in China. The steel is good quality steel. I've had no problems with rust on any of my Luban planes here. And to point out which ones are the Luban ones, this is a Luban plane, this is a Luban plane, this is a Luban plane, this is, this is, this is, this is, and now this is. So I've got quite a few Luban planes and I've not had any problems with rust at all. Uh, likewise, I haven't had any problems with rough castings or, or anything like that. They're just fine out of the box. Go and buy them. Anyway, thanks for watching. Subscribe, leave a like, and uh, I will see you next time. Cheers, ta -ra.